Welcome back to the next part of this weather app series. We're nearing the end of the series and the reason of course is that this application already works really great. However, there are a couple of things I want to fix or I want to add, let's put it that way. For one, I will get rid of this dummy data as we are now able to add our own data. Second, I want to have a sidebar which allows us to store separate profiles containing different cities which we then can load to well change the cities we see here because once i got rid of the dummy data here this will be empty by default and only be filled with the data we add here but in a real application you might want to save that and one step is to save it on the front and in different profiles however on a real app of course you would sync that with some kind of server where these profiles would be stored too so I will first start by getting rid of this dummy data. And this of course happens in the weather.data.ts file where I just delete the two new weather items which are added by default so that we only have an empty array left. So that's one thing. And now if we have a look at the application, I can still add Berlin and this looks good. But as I said, it would be great to save it in a kind of profile on the left here. Maybe I also have a default profile at the startup of the application, which you could always load. So in order to do this, I will create a new file here and I will do this in the root development folder. I will call this file profile. Oops, no, create a new file, profile.ts. And this will just define the profile class I want to have. Profile. Now I want my profile class to have a name. So each profile should have a name, profile name, which is of course a string. And also each profile should have an array of cities, which will be an array of strings. So this will not be an array of Weber items. But we, because we won't store the complete fetched Weber item here, but instead I will just store the city names, strings here, which will be searched for in the API once I load a profile. Because of course I always want to have the most recent weather data. Therefore I'm not saving the weather data, but just the city names which I want to search on the openweathermap.com API. So with this, I'm able to store a list of cities basically, that's all. And that's the profile class I'll use. Next, I want to create this sidebar component which will hold all these profiles. So also in the dev folder, I will create a new file called, side, oops, called sidebar.component.ts. And of course, this will start by being exported. So an exported class called sidebar, or sidebar component. And I will add the component decorator, of course. This will receive a selector of my sidebar and of course also a template. Now what should be inside this template? Well I want to have let's say a heading which says saved profiles something like this and then I will have a button which allows me to save a new profile. So save list to profile should save the current list of weather items. So of the weather items we will have down here, for example, Berlin, will save the current list as a new profile. So this button therefore needs a click listener which should fire the or target the unsaved new method which I will have to create in the body of this component, of course. So this allows me to create a new profile. Next, I will add an article so default HTML5 element here, which should basically hold my different profiles or hold one profile. I will later on loop through all these profiles, of course. Each article will have, let's say, a heading H4 with the name of the profile, profile name, and the city name, city, or the name of all cities, excuse me, it might be multiple cities, so like New York, London, I also want to add a button in, let's say, the top right corner, which allows me to delete the profile. Therefore, I will use just a X, so the X character, 
and I will give this a class of delete, which I will have to write my, on my own to give this the styling I want to have. And I will add a click listener here too, which should be on the lead profile. profile. And I want to get the event, the click event passed into this method so that I can stop propagation later on so that it doesn't bubble up anymore, though, but I can stop it so that it only the click event on this profile is recognized. So let's have a look at this and let's see how, how, how this looks in our view, in our template. In order to see this, I will, of course, have to embed my sidebar here in the app component. So I will do this right below my header, my sidebar. And also, of course, I need to add it here, my directives array. So sidebar component. And of course, as always, make sure to add the import to the sidebar component. Now, if we reload the page, well, we can see this doesn't look too pretty, to be honest. So that definitely needs some styling. Now in the source code of this project, and you can find this on GitHub, I will provide this sidebar.scss file, which has all the styling I need to make this look better. So you may just toss this into your project then, or pause the window right now, and then let it go again, and pause now, and resume, and pause to type it, whatever you prefer. But as I said, you will find it in my GitHub repository. Now in order to apply these styles to this component though, I will need to add something to this component decorator, the style URLs metadata, which allows me to specify an array of strings referring to paths in my project, which holds CSS files. So I only want to add specify one string here, and this will be the path to my sidebar.css file. This will live in the source CSS folder and then sidebar.css, since this is the folder where all my SCSS files will get compiled to. And remember that when accessing style or template URLs in Angular 2, you always have to think from the root folder, the project folder on, and not from the file where you're currently in. So source slash CSS refers to this folder, even though this dev folder where a sidebar.component lives in has no source folder in it. This has to be seen from the project root on, very important. Now the styles imported here will only be applied to this component, that's important too. Only this component will receive the styles. And if you, if you have a look in the sidebar.scss file, you see that host selector. And this means the whole body, but only of that component should receive these uh, styles here. And that is a good way to make sure that you're not overwriting or interfering with some other styling in your application, but instead only apply your styles where you want them to be applied. To go a little bit deeper into that, that uses view encapsulation, a concept introduced by Angular 2, which kind of, in the default setting at least, resembles the Shadow DOM specification, which is not supported by all browsers. And Shadow DOM would mean that each element in your DOM might have a, well, well, a Shadow DOM, a separate DOM behind it with its own styles and so on. And as I said, this is not supported by all browsers, but Angular 2 emulates this by default, such that it, through a clever trick by appending an attribute to your element and then adding this attribute to all the styles, which should only be applied to this element, side note. So by using this technique, it emulates these component or element specific styles and make sure that if you style, uh, for example, the H3 element here, only the H3 element in this component that receives the style and at all, and not all H3 elements in your application. If you want to learn more about view encapsulation, you'll find a link in the description below. So with this, if I now reload, this looks much nicer. But to make it look really nice, I will add a class to this article called profile. 
Now this looks good. So the profile list is in place. In the next video, it's time to fill it with some life.